Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video I'll introduce the greedy coloring algorithm, um, show you how that works, and then prove a uh, result which gives us an upper bound on the chromatic number of the graph, which uses this greedy coloring algorithm to give us the result. So first off, greedy coloring al algorithm. What does greedy uh, mean here? Well we've actually seen some greedy algorithms before in this course. Uh, for example, Kruskal's algorithm for finding a minimum weighted spanning tree. Uh, in that algorithm, we just uh, we started with the empty graph, remember, and we added edges in. And the way we selected the edges to add in was we looked at all the possible edges whose addition would not produce a cycle. And we just selected one that had a minimum weight over all of those. And we didn't care which one uh, of minimum weight. We didn't really think about that. We just selected the first one. Uh, of minimum weight. So that's a greedy algorithm that does that. We didn't really care about the consequences of just selecting a minimum weight at, uh, minimum weight edge at random. Same thing is true here for the greedy coloring algorithm. What we do is we go through we go through the graph. So say I have v1, let's say I have v2. Um, I'll assign 1 to V1. So we, we have to be given a list of the vertices of graph, and we'll label them like this. So I go to V1, and, may, and uh, I color that 1. I go to V2, and I see if that's adjacent to V1, I will color this 2. If it's not, I'll color it 1. So maybe it's not adjacent to V1. Uh, and then maybe I look at V3, and maybe this one was adjacent to vertex 1. And maybe it's also adjacent to vertex 2. Um, and now the greedy algorithm would uh, just pick the smallest color that's available uh, for that vertex. So now V3 here, since it's adjacent to a, a 1, uh, I would color that 2. And I would keep going on like this. At every stage, I'll look at the neighbors that have already been colored. So V sub J plus 1 here. I'll look at all these V sub J vertices that have already been colored. And I'll look in particular at the neighbors of V sub J plus 1. And I'll select the first, that is the smallest color that's already not been assigned, uh, that hasn't been assigned to any neighbor of this vertex. And we just keep going that way until we've assigned every vertex uh, a color. Now, one thing to note here is that if, let's say, k colors are used in the algorithm, so at the end of this algorithm, we get a coloring of the graph, let's say k colors are used. Uh, we can't say that the chromatic number of G is necessarily K. Uh, instead, we can say the chromatic number of G, since now we have a K coloring, we can say it's at most K. Um, so this only, uh, if we look at the output of our algorithm, the number of colors used, this always gives us an upper bound on the chromatic number. Uh, now, if one already, I guess I'll, I'll put it like this, is that um, there always does exist some list of the vertices of the graph for which the output, the number of colors, uh, will give us exactly the chromatic number. But we don't have that information uh, like a priori uh, before running this algorithm. We'd have to sort of do a brute force search through all the possible outputs of this algorithm and select the minimum there. That will always be the chromatic number of the graph. But just a single, uh, single run through of the algorithm we don't know if it's actually the chromatic number or not, but it's certainly an upper bound. Now, another interesting thing about this greedy coloring algorithm is that it depends on the sequence of vertices that I give it. So let's say uh, I have the same graph here repeated. Let's say in this one, I feed the algorithm the uh, sequence u, w, v, y, z, x. Let's just run through the algorithm. So U will get color 1. W, which is not adjacent to U, the smallest color available, is 1. Uh, looking at V, uh, now it's adjacent to two ones. So I'll color that 2. That's the smallest color available. I'll take a look at Y. It's not adjacent to any ones, so I'll color that 1. Uh, I'll take a look at Z. I'd have to color that 2. That's the smallest color available. And finally, I'll look at X. The smallest color available is 2. And so here, actually, we do get um, the chromatic number of the graph as the number of colors used. Uh, and, and that came from the sequence. So what if I pick a different sequence? So what if it was, say, u, x, v, 
W, Z, Y. Let's run the algorithm again. Let's say I put in one, uh, U would be assigned the uh, color one, X would then be assigned the color one, V would have to be assigned the color two, and uh, W now, it's adjacent to both a one and a two, it's assigned the color three. That's the smallest color available out of all of its neighbors. Uh, Z would get a two, and Y now would be adjacent to a one and a two. This would also be colored three. So here we get uh, a three coloring, which is not the chromatic a three coloring. And we know that uh, chi of G here is two, and so this is not the, the chromatic number of the graph. So, but it certainly is um, at least the chromatic number. So that's one thing to keep in mind is that switching the sequence of vertices will give us a different uh, coloring and possibly a different number of colors used. But there's always some sequence of vertices that gives us a, a chromatic G chromatic number of G color. So one useful thing here is we can use the greedy coloring algorithm to actually give us an upper bound um, on the chromatic number of any graph. Uh, and really this just comes from analyzing the algorithm and what sort of the worst case scenario is um, in the algorithm. So for this, uh, we just, we list, um, we list the vertices in sort of any order. Uh, we'll just say we feed it V1, V2. We don't really have any information from the graph, so this is kind of the best we can do is just list it like this and then apply uh, the greedy algorithm. And the question is, at each vertex, so if we're at, say, vertex um, VI, so suppose we get to vertex, we are at vertex vi. So we reach vertex vi in the algorithm. Question is, what is the biggest number that vi is assigned? What is the biggest number that vi is assigned? Well, let's think about that. So we do V1 here, we do V2, maybe there's an edge there, maybe not. We get all the way to VI, and VI has some neighbors over here. Now, worst case scenario is that uh, VI is adjacent to delta, uh, or, or, or rather VI is adjacent to exactly degree of VI vertices over here. So let's say it is. We can say for sure that this is at most uh, degree of VI. We're looking for worst case scenario here. So if there's at most degree of VI uh, edges coming back to these and sort of worst case scenario again uh, would be that uh, maybe all of the colors, all of its neighbors uh, are the highest colors that have already been assigned and so the color uh, V sub I would be assigned. Uh, so at most it would be assigned the color. So think about what would happen if it, every one of its degrees or every one of its adjacent vertices was back here. And those were the highest colors used so far. It, I would assign it the color one plus degree of VI. So that's sort of the, the maximum that this color could be assigned. And so we keep going. That happens at VI. And so in any case, each vertex, just thinking in general now, globally, each vertex is assigned the color at most, or I should say maybe is assigned at most, uh, the color one plus degree of VI. And then if we look globally, this is the maximum degree of the graph. So at any step of the algorithm, we're assigning the color at most one plus delta of G for every uh, vertex in the graph. And so that means, so at worst, the greedy algorithm gives us a one plus delta of G 
color. And that's an upper bound, so chromatic number of G is at most 1 plus the maximum degree. So that's a nice result that comes from the degree decoloring algorithm. Uh, we have this upper bound. Um, now actually, so here notice we didn't, we didn't really use any properties of the graph to pick our sequence. Uh, we just sort of picked this sequence at random, and so there was an extra, extra level of greediness here. Um, if we are in a situation where we have a little bit more information, I really just mean a little bit more, that is if we know the graph's not complete, not an odd cycle, then one thing we can do is we can produce a sequence that will reduce this worst case scenario by one. That is, and this is Brooks' theorem, that if G is a connected graph that's not an odd cycle and not a complete graph, then the chromatic number of the graph is at most uh, the maximum degree. Uh, and the idea here is to feed the greedy algorithm a, uh, pay a little bit more attention to the sequence we give it, use properties that it's not an odd cycle and not a complete graph to, to form this sequence, and then run the algorithm and see that actually we can decrease our bound by one. Because, of course, we need one plus delta colors if G is an odd cycle. We actually, it achieves this upper bound, right? This is achieved, uh, achieved when G is an odd cycle or uh, complete. What Brooks' theorem is saying is that those are actually the only connected graphs. Uh, that achieve this upper bound, and so we get a, uh, a better a better upper bound in those cases. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you next time.